Spirit we open ourselves up to when we involve ourselves in sexual sins especially. The devil is always looking for loopholes in our lives, opportunities to come in and take over. So he introduces a lot of temptations to lure us and crack us open. Once a person falls into these sins and does not quickly repent of them, the entrance is opened for spirits to come and take over. And it is surely not the spirit of God. Dabbling into sin of any kind, especially sexual sins, opens up a person to certain spirits, some of which are Spirit of fear. Sin leads to bondage and bondage brings fear. Romans 18.15 says that God has not given us a spirit of bondage again to fear. When you get involved in sexual sins, you give the devil leverage over you and become a slave to that sin and automatically to the devil himself. The spirit of fear keeps you from confessing your sins and coming to God for forgiveness. It makes you feel guilty about the act over and over again. It condemns you constantly, even when God has forgiven you. Some people commit adultery just once and regret it terribly. They want to confess it to their spouse, but they are scared of their reactions or of losing their marriage. They cannot tell anyone, and even worse is the knowledge that someone else other than themselves knows about the deed. The person can decide to use it as blackmail and threaten to expose the secret if such person refuses to continue the act. Even more binding is the memories that come with such act. You cannot get rid of them, and once they come up, you find yourself helpless against the torrent of emotions that assail you. The guilt and the shame of it all. Such a person lives in fear and has no liberty. If you are a believer, especially a respected person in your local church or fellowship, you find it difficult to open your mouth to say some things because the spirit will keep damning you in your heart. The same goes for other sexual activities that people get themselves involved in. The best thing is not to get involved at all. Just like the Bible says, flee. Stop flexing your spiritual muscles or testing the limits of your self-control. When it comes to sexual matters, you should know that we are vulnerable as humans. Even mighty men of God have fallen and have been brought down by this sin. The best to do as Paul instructed, flee. In any case you have been involved, God is still able to redeem you and deliver you from every spirit, including that of fear. You need to take a bold step and confess your sins to God with godly repentance, never to go back to such acts again. Once you do that, you will be free and gain liberty, one that can only be gotten from God. Spirit of Addiction there is a spirit responsible for making you do the same things over and over again, even when you do not want to. All it takes is for you to get involved once. It compels you to continue along the line using various means and tactics including fear, unnatural desires, and other forms to lure you. That is the spirit of addiction, and it has enslaved a lot of people. The most obvious ones that we know today are that of alcoholism and drugs. However, there is a wide range of activities and substances that people could become addicted to. People get addicted to social media, to games, to other people, and to certain habits, including sex. Some people cannot do without having sex in a day, and that is outside the boundaries of marriage. Some cannot be satisfied with sex from a single partner and look for others out there to satisfy their needs. People with issues of sexual addictions or any other form of addiction are usually advised to see a counselor or join a rehabilitation group. As good as these measures are, it is important to realize that these things are not merely natural behaviors, no matter the logic science tries to attach or give to it. They are acts that are controlled by the spiritual. 
they are sponsored by spirits. In this case, the spirit of addiction. All that spirit needs is a gateway, and once he gets it, it will keep manipulating the person and keeping him or her attached to that act even at a detriment of the person's life. Take drug addicts, for instance. The drugs do crazy things to them and make them do crazy things as well. Yet you find people selling their possessions and inheritance, even going as far as stealing just to get these drugs. Even if they want to stop, they cannot help themselves. The same applies to sexual activities. You watch pornography once or twice and become hooked. Or you got involved in premarital sex and you find yourself looking forward to another experience. Even when your conscience would not let you be. Even though you know it's wrong. Even if you are scared of being caught or maybe you simply hate yourself after watching or doing these things, you might still find yourself addicted. That is a spirit at work, and if care is not taken, one might become so gone such that those acts begin to seem normal, and gradually, that spirit will find a way to destroy that individual's life that it has possessed. That person will become open to sexually infected diseases, might have unwanted pregnancy, and lose the important relationships in his or her life. Spirit of Lust Another spirit that can take possession of a person involved in sexual sins is the spirit of lust. Lust of the eye and lust of the flesh. The spirit of lust starts with a love for the world and worldly things. 1 John 2.15 says, We should not love the world or the things that are in it. That is the loophole through which the spirit might have a go at you. Some people do not involve in these things initially because they are scared of what people will say, but deep down, they applaud what these people are doing. And Jesus already made it clear that the sin of adultery or fornication does not start with the act. It begins with the thought. So the devil uses the opportunity to penetrate with the spirit of lust, making the person long for sexual and fleshly desires. The spirit of lust goes hand in hand with the spirit of seduction. That is why you find so many people dressed and behaving in manners that cause others to lust after them. They beguile people with their flirty looks and half-naked dresses, or charm them and deceive them into having their way. So while the spirit of seduction is at work in one individual, the spirit of lust is seeking a means to penetrate the armor of the one being seduced. The Bible tells us to guard our hearts with all diligence. That means you should mind what you watch, see, and listen to. Put on the whole armor of God so you are able to withstand the devil and do not leave yourself open for the devil's attack. Spirit of Greed Like Oliver Twist, the spirit of greed leaves you hungry for more. Although greed is usually associated with money, it can also be applied to other things such as women, power and possession. Greed and covetous work together. It is what makes a man leave his beautiful wife and have an affair with someone else. Godliness with contentment is great gain. That is what the scripture says. The spirit of greed makes you dissatisfied with what you have and makes you go for things that are at the detriment of your soul and even more importantly, your relationship with God. It gradually begins until the whole person is consumed with greed. So believers should watch out. Spirit of Perversion The spirit of perversion makes you do things that are abnormal and make it seem like the most natural thing in the world. When you get married, you become one with your spouse, and so having sexual affairs with someone else should be out of place. It is like taking a round peg from a round hole and fixing it elsewhere, somewhere not appropriate. Or considering the sin of lesbianism, homosexuality, and masturbation. These are all sexual sins that arise from the wrong use of sexual parts or pairings with the wrong sexes or species. It is quite abnormal and unthinkable, 
Yet the spirit of perversion sponsors this act in people and makes them do things that are not convenient. Romans 1.27 says, And the men also turned from natural relations with women and were set ablaze, burning out, consumed, with lust for one another men committing shameful acts with men and suffering in their own bodies and personalities, the inevitable consequences and penalty of wrongdoing and going astray, which was their fitting retribution. The things we see today did not start in the dispensation. These spirits have been in existence even from the days of Lot. We see that the men of the city wanted to sleep with the angels and have come to save Lot despite his pleas for them to take his daughters instead. And now, in the book of Romans, Paul is still addressing the same issue again. That is to tell us that spirits do not die. They move from generation to generation, looking for people whom they can possess and carry out their enterprise.